Well, good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yuri Folani. Well, yesterday was the long expected day. Um, uh, the uh, refinery, the uh, Dangote refinery was inaugurated uh, by um, you know, a whole horde of um, dignitaries uh, led by President Mohamedou uh, Buhari yesterday. 650,000 barrels per day refining capacity. It's the, uh, well, my guest this morning is uh, Mr. Mukhtar Mohamed, economist and CEO of finance, uh, you know, with uh, Mukhtar. Uh, well, we, you know, we put that one in there. So, I mean, <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a very big deal. It, it's the largest, uh, uh, what do they call it, single track in, 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 in the world. Nigeria is doing something that is number one in the world. But it's come via the private, private sector initiative. Yep. And the governments of Nigeria, let's yep. go back from 1960 right up until now, until a private man stepped in and coordinated and organized, Nigeria has not had this biggest in the world. Nobody can, call, nobody can argue with that. Nobody how, can argue with it. How does that grab you that here we are, 2023? Uh, we, we, we have something, and spe specifically the Dangote refinery, that is the largest single one of its type in the world. Well, I just made us know that there's nothing that we cannot achieve as a nation. We didn't la have the right policy or the right support. Um, if you look at Dangote refinery, he had the right support from government right from the day he made up his mind to do it. And then policies were, were right for him. Dear what Dangote did. Um, um, I was talking to a journalist and he told me that the one time they were having a meeting with Dangote and they were asking questions when he wanted to build the refinery. And they were saying that uh, it's stupid for any man to want to build a refinery worth nine billion <laughs> in an economy that is still driven by subsidy, mm -hmm. by subsidy, and it's not looking like subsidy will end anytime soon. And he said to them that if there's that foolish man, okay. I am the one that is foolish. <laughs> but at the end of the day now, we are saying that he was the one that was the wisest among Indeed. them. Indeed. What was the figure? 19 billion now? 19 billion. Look, okay, okay. two things stand out. When I looked at it, when I was listening to it, two things stand out. We, we have a portaco refinery that have not delivered one liter of petroleum product. And we are going to, we, we borrowed $1.5 billion from World Bank or whatever to make the turnaround maintenance of Portaco refinery and it will be ready in January. Mm. According to the then Minister of Petroleum, Timmy Presiva, today the Baesha governorship aspirant of APC. Until he left to become the governor of Baesha, the contest to be the governor of Baesha State, we've still not seen the turnaround. We've not had one liter of oil, but yet we have somebody that has putting $19 billion to build the largest refinery in the world. In so the when world. we say it's not in the business for government to be in business, we mm. know what we are saying. Mm. Secondly, again, we must also look at it. Uh, the said CBN governor was so excited. He said um, Dangote borrowed from Nigeria. If you were, he thought the refinery was going to be like $9 billion. From $9 billion, he went as far as $19 billion. He borrowed from, from um, the banks. He borrowed outside and also borrowed within Nigeria. And at the end of the day, he has been able to pay 70% of yeah. his debt yeah. without production. Yeah. So what did he do? What he was doing was that those people that were investing, that I'm talking about in MPC, 20% stake mm. in the refineries and other investment. I mean, you know, there will have been other people that have invested also that are stakeholder. He rather pumped those money into servicing, I mean, servicing those debt. Now, he, we, he has not started production. He just have only 30% left to pay. pay. And here we are. We have a country that we keep borrowing and borrowing above our revenue. Well, in, 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 in truth, you know, uh, people don't do things like that. That is to say, uh, businessmen don't do things the way the Nigerian government uh, has been doing it. Uh, you, 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 just, you just spoke of a business decision that was made. Uh, rather than continue... Uh, willy-nilly, he just had to bring down his uh, uh, liabilities. And the, the, uh, he, the first product from, from that operation is expected for July. July. Can and, he, and he has paid 70% of his debt. So, so definitely you see why we always say that the private... And this was the same man that would have bought the Kaduna, I think the Kaduna and Portaco refinery for his partnership with um, Femi Otodola. I think blue is it blue keeps blue chip. Well, that was the name of the company they used at that time. 
And then the president, then President Yeradua, revoked the decision that was made by President uh, Obasanjo at the time he was leaving. So definitely you see a, a country um, that I'm sure if Aligo Dangote has bought over Portaco refinery or Cardinal refinery, I'm very optimistic by now he would have been working to full capacity. Yeah. And he will not be spending so much money for turnaround maintenance. Exactly. Um, what? Uh, whatever be the case, uh, we, we have it now. It's been done, it, it seems like to most people in almost record time. Uh, it looks like everything followed the plan. Uh, yes. They didn't come back and say that, well, we're going to have to extend. We're going to... uh, Uncle Yori, we need to look at it like this. Um, Dangote had all the support. And, and Indeed. I'm you, he Indeed. Had all the support. Indeed. Indeed. He had the support from the government. He had the support from the CBN. Remember when Dangote And he was careful to note that in his speech. Yeah. Remember when Dangote started building the refinery, the exchange rate, the naira to the dollar at that time was about one fifty. Then it moved to two fifty, it moved to three sixty, <laughs> it moved to four sixty five. None for once did the project stop. But what happened? The Nigerian government saw the need of that refinery, especially the CBN, and they decided they were going to give him FX at official price. We mustn't take that away. FX at official price. And that's why we keep saying that if you do it for one place, extend it to others. And so that's why sometimes when you see the manufacturers shouting that, look, can't we get FX so that we can bring in goods that can, that can help a lot of Nigerians? People don't understand why they say because some other people enjoy this benefit. Indeed. So we should. And we're all in the same business. We also market. do the same, the same business of trying to make good livings for Nigeria. But I know why the government did that. They saw uh, the, the subsidy, the petroleum, then as uh, what has been killing the economy. And I can say it here, for America, we have a, 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 a foreign a reserve of about 40 billion. We've been hovering between 38 to 30, 37, or sometimes went to 34. And Dangote refinery, uh, annually, annually, it will give us about $14 billion. That is what we have as our own reserve at the moment. One refinery because of the soft, the, 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 the cost saving measures that will be implemented and what government is going to benefit directly 30 billion dollars sure. Then other sources about 10 billion dollars. It is, it is huge, it is, it's humongous. And um, well, let me just say that uh, we're also uh, joined by an old friend of the house, uh, energy expert chief Martin Onovo. Uh, a fine morning to you. Good morning, uh, hi. Hi, Martin. It's been quite a while. Delighted to have you on the program. Chief Martin Onovo, as I said, much. is an energy expert. Um, how, um, uh, put your perspective on this, because um, a lot of Nigerians uh, might be feeling the way we feel uh, when Nigeria, as a country, you know, uh, goes out and plays uh, uh, an international match and uh, uh, everybody is claiming it and everybody feels happy for it. I is there anything akin to that in this? In other words, what are your feelings about the successful completion and indeed launching of this uh, refinery, 650 barrels per day? Well, I, I don't want us to be uh, over-optimistic. It's, it's good to be optimistic because uh, current information is that uh, actual production will start in uh, August or September. So it's not done, done. Not, uh, not, not, not the July that was estimated as the date of first sighting of product from that refinery? July was cited in the news. Well, uh, uh, if you look at the front pages today, you will see August. But, and, and if you look at the history of the project, they've missed many project uh, deadlines. So I think it's better to be conservative. Okay. Uh, even, even though I will prefer to be optimistic, because do we need the refinery? Definitely yes. Definitely yes. Was it a good idea that he started building a refinery? Yes. Do we have it? We're almost there. Okay. Okay. We're almost there because the, the refinery is only useful if we have products. And some of the rumors filtering is that what happened there was mechanical completion. And if that's correct, then after mechanical completion, you need to do your pre-commissioning. After that, you're commissioning before your startup. So um, I don't want to be overexcited yet, 
uh, until we're sure we can have the product uh, on the street. Is it a good project? Yes. But Has it been managed excellently with respect to project management uh, capacity? I will say that the fact speaks for itself. Okay. So, um, okay, I, 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 I take the caution that you are, you know, uh, putting uh, uh, into the conversation that, look, it's, it looks good, it sounds good, but when you take another look at it, um, even as far as it has come, um, everything hasn't been done, seem to be what I'm hearing from you. The T's haven't been crossed, the I's haven't been dotted. Uh, perhaps as an energy expert, you will know uh, what these mean more than uh, most of the people. But you are saying that they probably were working to a certain date and they wanted it to be launched on that date. But as to whether we are ready to start production, and um, as we have been reading in the news, Nigeria will now be out of this whole problem of fuel scarcity. We'll be able to supply all our domestic need, even have more uh, for, to, to spare for export. Uh, you're saying those days are still a little bit in the future. Oh, yes, because even the official uh, information is that it won't reach uh, peak production until 2024. But the important thing is that even if it reaches 50%, it is a great value addition to the Nigerian economy. And what my choice of words, I say even if it reaches only 50%, because 650,000 barrels per day is almost 100 million liters a day. Indeed. And uh, more than, yes, and more than half of that will be PMS. Between 50 and 55% will be PMS. So, uh, even if it's only 25 million we'll get, it's, it's, it's a lot of saving, it's a lot of, uh, it's a significant impact on our GDP, uh, it's a lot of uh, value added against inflation, domestic value added against inflation, and uh, petroleum products are uh, energy products. Therefore, Petroleum product supply amounts to energy supply. And energy is critical to economic development. And that's why I'm saying it's a good project. Has it been managed excellently from a project management perspective? I won't say so, because it has had a scheduled slip of uh, nearly 100%. But the important thing is that it is here. Yes. And now that it is here, whatever we need to do, pre-commissioning, commissioning, startup, operations, uh, we need to get that done efficiently because the country critically needs this refinery. Mm, mm, critically. Mm. We also critically need our own refineries. The let, four existing refineries, public refineries, we, we also critically need them. Let, let me ask you this. As an energy expert, much was made of the fact that... Um, um, it, not just that it can meet 100% of Nigeria's needs, but when it comes to the technology, because I think this is important, when it comes to the technology, it is very, very cutting-edge, state-of-the-art. It is said that it complies with the World Bank, uh, US, uh, US EPA, European Emission Norms, and uh, Department of Petroleum you know, uh, Resources Emissions uh, Effluent Norms. So um, is this... I mean, is, is that exciting to an expert like you that it, 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 must, it must be. It's it excellent must be. I all around. I can tell you that uh, it's, it, it, it wants it, to it put must, on the world stage. Exciting to, it must be exciting to all of us because we depend on the environment and we need to understand this from the basics. We drink water. The water is from the environment. We eat food. It is from the environment. We breathe air. It's from the environment. We must protect the environment. And I can tell you with full authority that uh, the Nigerian uh, government and agencies have uh, documented environmental standards that I am sure they have complied with. All the environmental problems you see in Nigeria are due to lack of enforcement, lack of monitoring. It's not because the standards are not there. The uh, upstream authority Sorry, Upstream Commission has their eager spin. Environmental guidelines. So, so the, the standards are there. We need to enforce them to protect the environment because in that way we protect ourselves and our health. Yeah, yeah. So, 
So we shouldn't be preaching to anybody to protect the environment. Everybody should individually commit okay. to protecting the environment because you yourself depend on the environment, whether you are an engineer or journalist or doctor. The environment sustains you. So we must necessarily, well, we don't have to wait for government. We must, even as individuals, commit ourselves to environmental protection. And I'm sure that if the regulators did their work, they wouldn't give him permit to progress without satisfying all the environmental requirements. Indeed. Okay. Um, one, one moment, please. Uh, coming back to uh, studio here, um, Mukta, the, the, the reports are also indicating not everybody knew that originally, uh, so it is said, Dangote wanted to start this project in River State. Uh, but it's, as things happen, they happen. It didn't work out, even though the people, some people in Rivers were not happy about it. Uh, but long story short, as a result of uh, negotiations uh, breaking down, I believe that's the sort of way government, I mean, businesses talk about these things, they think moved to Lagos. Um, how, how, how important is that? Well, um, that's a big loss to River State. But again, as you're looking at River State alone, but when you look at the economy as a whole, that's a big loss also. Because now uh, we're looking at cost of doing business, we're looking at cost of bringing down um, refined petroleum products. And I think the people that would have benefited most from that would have been the people from River State because that means the cost of I mean, crude oil is already there, so mm -hmm. it just moved to. I think that's why Dan Whitty wanted to cite it in, in River State. I think uh, it's a big loss, loss to them. We're talking about about 137,000 direct jobs it's, and millions of other indirect jobs. So you could see what, what that can do to, to an economy exactly. like that. But for Lagos State, I think it's, it's an advantage that comes with responsibility. Because I, I saw Mr. Governor so excited about it. And I said, well, when they come prosperity, they come responsibility. And that responsibility, I hope they'll be able to meet up with it. Because uh, we are looking at, uh, we don't want what happened at that Papa to begin to happen on the exits. Mm -hmm. So we, mm -hmm. want, then we, want, we don't want what happened in River to begin to happen to those communities in that exit because I got it from good authority that um, the most of the community in that area do not have light, do not have power. And if I remember... But we're talking about Ibeju, Leki, Ibe in Lekki, Lagos, is, where this project... Yeah. Okay. So uh, if you look at Abajana cement factory where Dangote cement is located, they have independence power supply that has been sub supplied by Dangote cement. Mm -hmm. So I think um, the governor should begin to look at that we don't want a situation whereby the, the, the hem that lays the golden egg is not being taken care of. So then we also not look, at, look at the road networks again. Uh, I know they are doing a lot of construction on the Fort Mainland Bridge from there up to that Ekbe Axis. Let's continue to look at those construction. Let's see how we can decongest those places so that it doesn't become another papa on the other exit of, of Lagos. Mm -hmm. And then again, we need to look at touting. It has come with a lot of advantage then. The government also look at touting and insecurity. Did, did you say touting because we are also mentioning Lagos? No, it's, 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 it, I, I mean, when I mean touting, I don't mean to the negative again. Let me add there. Okay, maybe I'm, in terms of levies, fee. Because, okay, okay let me use okay. that word. Okay. Yeah, because most of the people that are there are not there on their own. They are there at one representative of one area. Maybe Lagos State, uh, local government, uh, revenue, this and that and that. So we should look at that because we are looking at cost of doing business here so that we can see all these things come down and then Nigeria will be able to enjoy uh, a supply of this product at a good price. Uh, like, he's, like he said, uh, for me, project management has to come with the challenges that they have to come. So that's why it's called project management. Uh, if you remember, like I said, a project that started with an exchange rate of about uh, 150, $150 to $170 per bar, I mean, one, so exchange rate of one, $170 to $170, dollar, then it's now being concluded at an exchange rate of $465, that official rate, because mm -hmm. they told me, don't know that mm -hmm. he gets this in officially. Then you could know that definitely with such challenges, you don't expect that project to finish at the rock of time it's expected to finish, because you are not depending on some other people to supply you these effects. And so definitely, I think for me, it, it still, like he said, it's still call for, for celebration that at last we could be uh, refining our product here. And then like Lagos State, like I said, is a huge opportunity for Lagos State, especially knowing that a lot of population, Nigerians, stays in Lagos. 
it will be a huge problem. But I want the government to make sure that lessons are learned from what is happening in Apapa, not to happen in that exit. And I think they are learning fast because they are trying to do a second road. Because if you look at it, if, if you are not learning fast, there's only one exit into Lake Yekbe. And there's only one exit out. And you remember, you not talk, if we have been experiencing traffic in those exits now, then if we add the, the tractors, I mean the trailers to them, I mean, it's going to be very, very challenging. So hopefully, I think, as the gov Mr. Governor is so excited about it, he should get his team to sit down and begin to see the, op the, the challenges that comes with this opportunity. Okay. And let's start solving them now. Okay. Uh, Martin, I'm going to come to you, but let me pick up this call that has just come in from uh, George in Lagos. Good morning, Mr. George. Good morning, Uncle Yuri, and uh, good morning to your guest. Yes. Uh, Uncle Yuri, I want to say congratulations to all of us. What happened yesterday uh, is a landmark achievement that uh, even the developed countries never thought a third world country like ours can achieve it. So, it makes some of us proud as uh, Nigerians. I want to thank Alaji Dangote for his effort. What he has done is a face setting uh, project which we expect other Nigerians to emulate. I would like the government to also take advantage of this opportunity. I don't believe that a country that is uh, number six producer of crude in the world would be living and buying fuel at the same rate with a country that has never seen fuel in, in their land. If my memory serves me right, 300,000 barrels were, were earmarked for local consumption before we export. That 300,000 barrels that the government has earmarked for local consumption, the government should negotiate it with Dangote to produce it at, at a lesser cost so that we don't end up buying fuel at a rate higher than we are buying now. That would be, that, that, people will not see the, the economic gain in it. At least it should be less than what we are already buying right now. Okay. Oh, all right, Mr. And George, then, thank you very much for calling in. Um, it's a very practical uh, notion slash question. And... Um, uh, let, let, me, let me take it over to Martin Onobo, who's the energy expert here. How doable, and because a lot of Nigerians will say, aha, at long last, we're not importing anything. Now we shouldn't be paying humongous prices per litre for uh, our premium, uh, for our fuel. How doable is that? Well, um, once uh, it starts uh, production, uh, according to some of the reports, Peak production will be attained in 2024. If peak production is attained, like I said, that will be about 50 million liters of PMS alone. So that, that uh, by most estimates, is uh, sufficient or near sufficient for domestic uh, use. And do not forget that we have uh, $2.7 billion worth of projects going on in the public uh, existing refineries as a uh, turnaround maintenance. If those ones too are successful, then you have a situation where we now start exporting petroleum products, not just raw crude oil. That's value added. That is increased economy, increased the revenue for the economy, sorry. That's increased revenue for the economy. So uh, the project is a very good project. But I, I don't want to tell anybody that it is complete. Okay. Uh, mechan mechanical completion is not production. You, you said so from the beginning. 